Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in Calculus, and this is a BC lesson. For all you AB students, if you're watching this, you do not need to do this. You don't have to worry about Euler's method on the AP exam for the AB course, it's just BC. So in our next lesson, when we get to 7, 6, we're going to talk about how to find a solution for a differential equation and a specific solution, y equals something, blah, blah, blah. So in this lesson, though, before we find an exact solution for it, we're going to talk about how to find an approximate solution to a differential equation. Okay, that's the what Euler's method does. Euler's method helps us find an approximation using some different strategies that he came up with. Now, Euler is uh, he's a Swiss mathematician. Now, I pronounce it Euler because that's kind of the German pronunciation. That's where he's from and that's how they say it. But a lot of people in the States will say Euler. Technically, that's not correct, but don't make a big deal of it if you say Euler instead of Euler or somebody else does. That's not that big a deal. And uh, because he's a Swiss math mathematician, I should say, do you know what's really cool about Switzerland? What's really cool about Switzerland? Uh, well, I don't either, but their flag is a big plus. Okay, so the method that we're going to use. We're going to start off with dy dx equals 1 plus y, and we know that it's going to go through the point 0, 0. Now this delta x here, what that means, for those of you who don't remember, delta x means it's like the step size, or it's the difference in x's. So you could think of this as it is the step size, that size, and this is really sloppy, sorry. The step size is a 0.5. Using Euler's method, let's show an approximation to the solution curve. So what we're going to do is construct a bunch of little tangent lines. You do not have to do this normally, and you're not going to even have to do this in the practice. I just wanted to show you really what's going on with Euler's method when we do this. So before we start constructing the tangent line, I want to show you what it actually looks like. So what is the solution to this, this uh, different the slope field here? So this slope field represents dy dx equals 1 plus y. We want to go through the point zero, 0, so I know I'm going to go through that point right there. What would this thing look like? Well, this is the curve, it's just this nice curve, but that's not what we're going to draw. What we're going to draw is an approximation of this green curve. So here's how we do that. We're first going to construct a tangent line right at zero, 0, between 0 and 0 0.5. Now, why did I go to 0 0.5? Because the step size is 0 0.5. So I'm going to go from 0 to 0 0.5, and then I'm going to make another one from 0 0.5 to 1, and then another one from 1 to 1 1.5. See, so that's what we're going to be creating here. So how do we construct a tangent line? The easiest way is probably to just use slope, point slope form. So we do y minus, what's the point it goes through? 0, 0, so y minus 0 equals, now I have to do the slope, and then it's going to be times x minus 0. So what's the slope? Well, the slope is based off of the derivative which they gave us. So we have dy dx, and that equals 1 plus y. So 1 plus, and what's the y value? It is 0 right there. So 1 plus 0. So that's just a 1. So when you simplify this all up, we get y equals x. So we're going to construct a tangent line from 0 to 0 0.5 of the curve y equals x. Well, that's fairly simple. That's just a nice straight line, a diagonal line from 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 right there. Let me use my drawing tool to make it straight. There we go. So now we have a new line. And now I'm going to draw a little point right here. And this tangent line here, this quick little tangent line, remember, is an approximation. So if I were to look at the actual curve, you can see here it's going to be off a little bit. So what we're doing is if you had a smaller step size, instead of 0.5, if I went 0.25, my little tangent line would be just a little bit more accurate. And then I would do another tangent line to 0.5, and then another one. And so they'd be more accurate. But this one is going to be uh, not quite as accurate, but the smaller the step size, the more accurate these tangent lines would reflect the actual curve. Okay, so now what do we do next? We have this new y value at 0.5 comma 0.5. So our starting point was 0, 0. Our new point that we're going to work with is 0, 0.5 comma 0, 0.5. Okay, so you want to get that written down for our next step. Now what we're going to do is construct another tangent line from 0, 0.5 to, uh, to 1. So the x values of 0, 0.5 to 1, meaning from here to here. So we're going to start off there and then it's going to come off here some type of tangent. So how do we do that? Just like we did before. We're going to do a slope intercept form. So what is that? y minus 0 0.5 and then that's going to equal the slope and then we have uh, x minus 0 0.5. So we're just using point slope form but I need to know my slope. So my slope is going to be dy dx equals, now remember what dy dx was? 
1 plus y. So I'll say 1 plus, and in this case, the y value is 0.5. So that equals 1.5. So now that, that is my new slope. Okay, so now I need to, let's solve for y and see what this curve is going to look like, or the line, I should say. So I get y minus 0 0.5. Let's speed this up. 1.5x minus half of 1.5 is 0 0.75. Add 0.5 over to both sides. I get 1.5x minus 0 0.25. Okay, so now that's my new tangent line. Now to graph that, that is a little tricky. Let's take 1.5x minus 0.25. If I look at this curve, how am I going to graph that? Like 0.25 here, but it's a piecewise function, a piecewise line only between 0.5 and 1. That's a little bit tricky. So instead of doing, uh, trying to guess like that, we know it's going to go through this point. So all we need to know is the value of 1 because we're only going from 0.5 to 1. So let's go ahead and say that if, uh, I'll use different color here, that if x equals 1, then y has to equal, now we can just plug that 1 in. So we get 1.5 minus 0 0.25, and then that gives us, what does that give us? 1.25. So now I know that's my new point. I was at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 when we started, and using this Euler's method thing with a little tangent line, I am now going to be at 1 comma 1.25. So get that written down and I'm gonna put that on the graph. So what is that? 1 and 1.25, a quarter of the way in between, and then sketch the graph here, draw a line. And you can see here now this line, the, these two segments, they're not perfect lines. So it's you, you can see now this one's a little bit steeper. So it would be starting to follow a little bit more of this curve while they're getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Now it is off though, right? That line is not an exact of where it would be if x equals one but it's an approximation. Okay, so let's keep going here. Where are we now? So we now have a new line, one and 1.25. We're gonna do the exact same thing. So we start off with a point slope form of the line, y minus 1.25 equals the slope, and the slope was one plus y, which is one plus, uh, y is 1.25. So therefore my slope is 2.25, and then times it by x minus one, because of the point slope form, x is a one there and simplify this down to that and then we can solve for y and get y equals that equation now this is going to, again too hard to try to graph this within a piecewise function between 1 and 1.5 so what we'll do is we'll just say well if x equals 1.5 then my new y value is going to be 2.25 times 1.5 minus one. And then of course you can, I would definitely be using a calculator to help with this, speed this up. And then you'd get 2.375. So that gives us the new point of 1.5 comma 2.375 to work with. So let's go back to our graph. We have 1.5, 2.375, which is really hard to know exactly where that is. I'd say somewhere around here. And then let's sketch a little quick little line in between those. And there we go, it looks something like that. So again, this is an estimate of what that curve was looking like, and it, the further you go, the more it's going to be off, right? My 1.5 here is 2.375, and the actual graph was this. So at 1.5, look how far up it was. It was off our graph, it was off our grid, I should say. So it's way up here. So it is going to be off. So that means the smaller of our step size, the more accurate it would be. So if we continue to get smaller and smaller step size, it would be really, really close. So what I mentioned before was that you will not have to do these little tangent lines like that. That's not how we're going to do it. I just wanted to show you visually what it was for Euler's method. And what the next example, I'm going to show you this is the type of thing that you'll have to do. So here's the type of questions that you'd probably see on an AP exam, this type of format. So we have a differential equation, dy dx equals 2x. We're going to let y equals f of x be some solution. Again, next lesson we'll talk about how to get that. And we know that it goes through the point 1, 3. So what they want to know is what is an approximation of f of 2? So if you're at f of 1 and you know the y value, use Euler's method to get an approximation of f of 2. Now this one's going to do five steps, okay? The le so this lesson is going to be five steps. You will not have to do five steps on any of the mastery checks, the tests, or anything like that. The practice doesn't even have five steps. We're not going to do five steps otherwise because it takes so long to do five steps. So I'm just going to show you how you would keep doing it if you had to. Uh, but the first thing is if you were doing five steps, uh, that many times, we have to figure out what the step size is. So if we're starting at 1, and we're going to 2, and you're going to have 5 steps in there, you just have to think about how do you calculate that. You would take 2 minus 1 and divide by 5. So every single step is one-fifth of a number. Or in other words, it might be easier if you uh, 
me write this down here. If you write it as a decimal, that's probably a little bit easier to say 0 0.2 because you will be able to use a calculator on this. All right, so what I want to show you here is a reminder. We have point slope form. We've been using that. And then we could solve for y, and we get this one. So y equals y1 plus slope x minus x1. Now, what? here's the cool thing that I want to show you. And this is important to memorize. So what is this confusing stuff? I just wanted to show you what I've been talking about. I use those things like new y value, my old y value. That was when we were graphing, right? And I had a point. I'd have a point from here to here, and I would draw that line. This was my old y value. Now I have a new y value to work with to figure out the other point. And then there's my that was my old y value. Now this is my new y value. That's what this is. Okay, so we have a new y value. If you want to calculate what it is, you take your old y value and you add dy dx, the slope, so which is m, see this? So the old y value plus dy dx times the delta x, which is basically your step size, right? That's what this delta x is. It's your step size. Or in other words, you could do it this way. If you want to know your new y value, your new y is going to be equal to your old one, your y1 plus y prime delta x. Okay, it's the same thing. So we're, this is the important thing that we're going to use, and you might want to rewrite that on all the problems that you do just to help you get used to it. So let's go to our problem here. So let's remember, when we find the new y, it's going to be y1 plus y prime times delta x. And I need to write down, because I don't have it on the page here, what was dy dx equal to? dy dx equals, what did I have? Uh, 2x. Okay, so now how did I get these numbers? I knew, knew that my delta x was... 0.2. I already calculated that out up above. So I'm just starting at 1, and I'm going to go until I get to the number 2. And I'm going 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 increase. That's, those are all my step sizes. Once I get to this y value right here, this is my answer. I'm trying to approximate what is f of 2 approximately using Euler's method. That's what the whole goal of this is. So again, this is five steps, not what you'll have to normally do. That's This is longer than what you'll usually have to do, but it's still good practice for us to go through this. Okay, so what is the y value when x equals 1? That was given to us. The y value of x equals 1 is 3. So I can just write 3. And now I want to know what is y prime. Well, y prime is 2x. So it's 2 times, what's the x value? A 1. And then that just equals 2. That's easy enough. So now what's my new y value? My new y value is y1 plus, so y1 was the 3, my, my original y, plus, and now it's the slope, so uh, plus 2, times delta x, which is 0 0.2. So this 0 0.2 is going to be the same for each one of these lines. And then that equals, so 3 plus 2 times 4, yeah, 3.4. Okay, so there's my new y value. So down here, I'm going to say now I have the point 1.2 and 3.4, which is just what we were doing on the other practice with all those little tangent lines. So this is now my new point that I'm working with, and I'm going to now do repeat the same thing. So I'm going to say uh, the y prime is going to be 2 times x, so it's 2 times 1.2. So you can see here, this gets nice to have a calculator because you get these decimals here. So that's going to be 2.4 if you don't know that one in your head. And then what do we have here? We have the old y value. See up above, we said 3 before, but this time the y value is 3.4. So we're going to start at 3.4, and we're going to add the derivative y prime, so 2.4 times the delta x, and the delta x is still 0 0.2. So again, 0 0.2 is going to be on all these. And then that's going to equal, uh, what is that? Uh, crazy decimal. Let me get my calculator. 3.88. Okay, so 3.88. So now we're going to go to the next line. So this y value is, the new y value is 3.88. Now, if there had been a lot of decimals here, you don't want to round early, right? If there had been like four decimals, you'd include all four decimals. Don't round early or else you'll have a rounding error by the time you get way down here. So include all the decimals you can when you're working through this to help you get as accurate as possible down on this last step. Okay, so now we just keep going with this. The same old thing. So we're going to say it's uh, delta x, excuse me, y prime is 2x. So it's 2 times the x value is 1.4. So that's now going to give me 2.8 here. And then we have, I'm going to save myself some time because I already did this. We have 3.88 plus the 2.8. Now I put 1 fifth here, but up here I said 0 0.2. But it's really 0 0.2 equals 
4.44. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is you're gonna pause the video and finish this chart off. You don't have to do these last two boxes right here because uh, we're not trying to get keep going past two. We're only trying to get to the value of two. Okay, so go ahead and finish this. Um, pause, pause your video and see if you get the same answer as me. And if you did it correctly, you should have had 5.8. So what we would say, for, and you can just check through, make sure your work uh, is the same as mine, the numbers you've got uh, to make sure you're doing this correctly. And then the answer then, what you would say is that, if we go back up here, what was it asking for to approximate f of two? So we would just say that f of two is approximately 5.8. And then boom. And so the work that you're showing is Euler's method. Okay. That covers Euler's method for this lesson. See, not too bad. You just have to get used to organizing it at a chart of information to help you go along the way. All right, rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.